This time on the Gadget Show Web TV, John's checking out Motorola's new digital photo frame. I get you up to date with the latest tech news, and Otis has a little something up his sleeve for Halloween. Look! It's working! Yeah! Hello and welcome to Web TV. Digital photo frames have been around for ages now, and we're all used to having a constant flow of images on them. John's been checking out the latest offering from Motorola, which takes things to a whole new level. When this Motorola LS1000W digital picture frame arrived in the office the other week, the specification struck me as very comprehensive, but not really that remarkable. 10 inch screen, 800 by 600 pixel resolution, 512 megabytes of internal memory, and an SD card slot so you can expand it. And once you've connected it to the internet via Wi Fi, you can browse your Flickr and Picasso accounts. It's got an internet radio built in, so you can listen to that through the built in speakers, which you can also use to listen to music. You can even email pictures directly to the frame. There's also a calendar function and a rotating feature, so you can orient the pictures that way and use it vertically. I wasn't wildly impressed by the styling either. I mean, this silver frame is a bit plasticky looking and you can't change it. Picture quality is good though, with uh, some very strong colours. Overall though, I think I'm slightly more impressed by the Sony frames that have come top of our top five digital picture frame items on the Gadget Show in the past. Just slightly more desirable with slightly better picture quality. What did impress me though was the company's claim that I could view my Facebook photos and indeed those of my friends on the frame through its Wi-Fi connection. It transpires that this is all part of a service offered by a digital picture frame content provider called Frame Channel. They've been around for a year or two now and they actually provide content for frames made by a variety of manufacturers. What it does is turn your picture frame into a sort of hub for all kinds of information and pictures. Now, in order to use it, you've got to go onto the Frame Channel website on the internet, create an account, and then you're confronted with a really quite massive choice of different channels you can put onto your frame. For example, I could have uh, news from the BBC or from Reuters, pics of music recommendations, or indeed a, um, a Facebook channel. Go into that, you put in your account details, and you can select which of yours or your friend's photos you want to appear on the frame. And I can customize all this quite a lot. I can have uh, different channels given different priorities at different times of the day. I can uh, choose how frequently I want the pictures to change. Having set it all up, I then go out of my uh, pictures on the frame and instead go to the Wi-Fi part of the menu there, select the frame channel, and all that content should start appearing. And indeed, I can see pictures from Tom Clint's Facebook account appearing straight away. Very good. It's impressive that it all works, but it's far from perfect. Some of the settings on the website are quite difficult to fathom, and you end up wanting more control. I mean, if a picture pops up on the screen that you like, you want to find out more about it, you can't. And some of the content doesn't seem that well configured for the device, like these Reuters news headlines. You only get half the story. It actually stops mid-sentence. Very frustrating. And there doesn't seem to be a simple refresh feature. This content's been up here for at least 15 minutes without changing. Now, this is the first frame channel device I've experienced, and others might be able to use the content a great deal better. But I think they'd have to be better than this for me to want to leave a digital picture frame on all the time. Right, news time now, and first up, Sky TV has launched an on-demand service called the Sky Player on the Xbox 360. The service includes both on-demand content and live TV streaming, and requires both an Xbox Live Gold and Sky TV subscription. You can also buy relevant packages online, which start at £15 each, but premium content will have to be paid for separately. You'll need a minimum one megabit broadband connection, although Sky suggests two meg is ideal to enjoy the best experience. Sky Player comes with some neat features for the 360 that make watching programs over Xbox Live a more social experience. Your avatar sits in front of a screen along with any of your friends' avatars, and you can control their gestures and use your headsets to talk to each other whilst watching. 
Next up, Canon has just introduced its latest full HD capable DSLR to the market, the Canon EOS 1D Mark IV. The 16 megapixel beauty has a brand new AF system which reaches 45 points. Video captures 1080p high definition images at 30, 25 and 24 frames per second and 720p footage at 60 and 50 frames per second. It's great for shooting in lower lighting conditions with an ISO range of 100 to 12,800 and an expanded ISO setting of 102,400, which is the highest seen on any Canon camera. The Mark IV will be available at the end of December and cost around four and a half grand. Next up, and just in time for Halloween, Otis has been playing with his magic wand. Using a remote control can be so boring sometimes, it's really tedious, so why not spice things up a little bit by introducing magic into your life? This here is a remote control wand. I know you don't believe me, but using this and a series of pre-programmed moves, you can control any device in your house that you can use a remote control on. So I'm going to tell this wand that three particular movement will tell my DVD player to start, stop, and bring up the menu. The wand comes pre-programmed with 13 different gestures. Now, you can use each of those 13 to control one aspect of 13 different devices, or all 13 to control 13 aspects of one device. It's completely up to you. Okay, so here we go. I've programmed uh, everything in. There's no remote control in my back pocket or front pocket or in my hand, okay? Here we go. Play. Hey, look! Look! It's working! Yeah? Stop. Yay, cool! Now bring up the menu. There you go, see? Fantastic! Now, uh, obviously I'm an expert with this, but um, let's see if a regular muggle uh, can make it work. Dion! <laughs> okay, this, it, believe it or not, is a wand and it does work simply by doing the right flourishes and muttering the correct spell. Um, okay. I've already taught my wand to play, stop and bring up the menu on the DVD player. So first of all, I'm going to bring up the menu. Menu. Hang on, I, you said menu though, is it voice activated? With me, because I have a special relationship with my wand, I don't. Oh, okay. I'm just saying the words so you know what's going to happen with each okay. one. Play. That's yeah, alright, that's alright, look. Look. Huh? Stop. Oh, okay. See? Gotcha. And you reckon muggles oh, right. can't do this? I don't that believe that you'll take to it as quickly as I did, obviously because I was born under magic vibes. First of all, I want you to flick to the left yep. and show me the menu. Okay. Menu. It's more of a wrist, menu. wrist action. There you go. Yay. See? Right. Play. Play. Play! Oh, don't get angry with it. <laughs> Play. <laughs> oh, <see>. oh, <clears throat> Broken. Up. Play. <laughs> Not fair. Okay, try and stop it. Right, okay. To That's the right, a flip yeah. To the right, yeah. Stop. There you Yay! go. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm magical too. No, no, obviously it takes some work with muggles, uh, but if you have been born under uh, magical circumstances, then uh, maybe you should get one of these. It takes a while to program it, as you saw earlier on, but it's a nice little bit of fun. Yeah, can I go back to work now? You can, thank you very much. <laughs> and as a special added bonus, uh, check this out. Blinds. Ah. Sorry guys, it's gonna be dark for a little while. I just have to find a remote control to open up the blinds again. Remote control-y. Hello. Sorry. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but in the next Gadget Show, Susie and Jason will be delving into the world of pet gadgets. Until then, you can keep up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter, and keep watching our website for exclusive special extra content. Bye for now.